Hey everybody, it's Midwest Comic Man. For this episode of Creator Spotlight, I've chosen Maurice Whitman. He's relatively unknown to the majority of the collecting public, but his work is phenomenal and something to behold, so I hope you really enjoy this one. He's most famous for his work with Fiction House, and the most amazing fact to me about Maurice Whitman is he had no formal art training whatsoever and was completely self-taught. Here are 15 of his greatest covers in no particular order. Planet Comics number two, 72 is our first one. This guy is self-taught? Are you kidding me? I have trouble making a good stick figure, and he's churning out masterpieces like this. The standard fiction house calmly lasts in peril, with an alien beast holding her as a valiant Earthman comes to the rescue. Crazy. Next is Wombi the Jungle Boy 6. I had to put in an elephant cover for my fellow Golden Age lover, JD. All the animals are well rendered in this cover, as they rush from a fire in the jungle trying to escape. Next, we have Wombi the Jungle Boy 11. Okay, so I threw another elephant cover in for JD, because this one is awesome. Incredible line work, with many super fine details on all of the animals pictured. This is just a beautiful cover. Next is Man of Mars 1. More typical Fiction House cover fare, but boy howdy is it well done. A beautiful but angry green-skinned alien woman that would not look out of place with Captain Kirk. You got spaceships in combat, a valiant hero with a blaster, cities burning and falling apart in the background. This is great stuff. Next is Monster One. This one makes me think Jekyll and Hyde. A green-skinned monster kidnaps a woman while beating a man down on a foggy London street as a bobby tweets his whistle in the background. Awesome stuff. Next is The Monster Two. This is one of the most horrific covers Fiction House produced. You have women screaming and fainting in terror. A cop screaming into the phone with a smoking gun looking all horrified. And central to the cover, a hideous, slavering creature that seems to be reaching out to the viewer. Pretty powerful stuff. Next is Ghost Comics number 2. I loved the covers for Ghost Comics, and this is one of my favorites. You got a girl with a great set of lungs, awakening with a start. She lighting, lights a candle. There's a ghostly image of a puppeteer in the background. I mean, with one look, you know this is a Fiction House book. Next is Ghost Comics number 6. Time for a little bondage cover. Got a gorgeous woman chained to the floor by a hideous creature. As our hero breaks into the crypt, automatic at the ready for action. Great detail on the cobwebs and spectral shapes in the background. Next is Submarine Attack 13. After Fiction House, Whitman landed at Charlton. I love submarine covers, and this one packs a punch. You have a US sub tearing through a Japanese sub in the green murky depths. It's not going to end well for them. Awesome stuff. Next, we have Fightin' Air Force 10. Great sensationalist cover here. I was a kamikaze pilot has a well-rendered Japanese fighter plane flying over an aircraft carrier. Is it a U.S. carrier? Japanese carrier? Who knows? We'll find out inside. Who wouldn't want to buy this? Next, we have Sheena, Queen of the Jungle 11. Back to the Fiction House Jungle Books. Well-composed Sheena cover here. Whitman's Jungle Women often had what I've heard described as a feral look, which I think is a pretty accurate descriptor. Anyway, this is well done. Next is Sheena, Queen of the Jungle 14. It's another great Sheena cover. Sheena and her simian friends, I think, are swinging through the trees, under fire from below, as cheetahs chase like dogs after a fox. Amazing detail everywhere. Next is Sheena, Queen of the Jungle 16. We finish our trifecta of Sheena covers with a great cover of Sheena under attack from two lions. The lion in the front seems to be on the losing end, but the lion in the back is in mid-strike. 
This is a really exciting cover. Next, we have Davy Crockett number five. Another simple but well executed cover. Davy Crockett dominates the foreground in exquisite detail, as in the background, an Indian war party rides hard towards him. This, this one really has stunning detail from the, the, the details on the gun to the clothes. It's just really nice. And finally, we have Ramar of the Jungle 5. Interesting cover, this one. We have great detail of a cape buffalo being wrestled to the ground by its horns in the foreground. But what exactly is with the accountant-looking fellow in the background? Weird. Truly, the work of a Golden Age great who's relatively unknown in the larger comic community. Maurice Whitman developed diabetes and died of heart failure in Connecticut on May 10, 1983 at the age of 60. I still can't believe he was self-taught. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button and sub me up. I've put my website for my cleaning and pressing business in the description below. I'm continuing to make updates to the site as time allows. If you need any info, my email address is on the website. The next episode of Creator Spotlight will highlight Mac Rayboy, Captain Marvel Jr.'s muse. Stay tuned for that, as well as the next issue of Inside the Covers, which will spotlight Planet Comics number 4. If there are any creators you would like to see spotlighted, or an issue you would like to see on Inside the Covers, please let me know in the comments below. Make sure you tune in for Comic Core on Friday nights, and Blast It or Stash It on Sunday nights. For my comic community shout-out this episode, please check out Mastodon Comics and Collecting. Currently at 114 subs, Donnie is a real pain in the... Nah, I'm just kidding. He's a great guy. He's putting out solid content. Seriously, check him out. Sub him up, and let's get him to do some more videos because they're really good. Until next time, this is Midwest Comic Man coming at you from the funny pages.